Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, the next, I don't know, 45 minutes, the last 45 minutes of this show was, I don't know, what the fuck? Throw some crap against the wall, see what happens. Well, I'll tell you because it was the grizzled young vets, Roosh, the Beast Mortos, and Roderick Strong. I need to start over again. Everyone, this is a 10-man tag, so listen carefully. Team one is the Grizzled Young Vets, Roosh, Beast Mortos, and Roderick Strong against Hook, FTR, and the Outrunners. I was excited just because of the people involved. Sure. But there was one problem, and that is that I don't know what happened, but this match started with like 35 minutes of television time left. Mm -hmm. And granted, they had a Nigel promo at the end and a Serena promo, but this match must have went like 25 minutes. And this so it went through three commercial breaks. Was it three? I it counted four. I, I wrote yeah. down three. It's possible I missed one. Okay. I mean, it went through one commercial break after another, and it was just, I mean, it's 25 minutes long, so it's like they'd spend five minutes getting heat on Dax, then they'd get five minutes getting heat on Hook, then they'd get five minutes getting heat on Tur. It's like there was so much heat, and the crowd died every time there was heat. They just wanted to see all these 10 guys doing crazy shit. And so at the end, after the fourth, third or fourth commercial break, whichever the hell one it was, then we finally got, like, everybody getting in, and uh, I think two guys, I think Hook and Roddy brawled to the back, so there was only, you know, eight guys left. So they all brawled in a bunch of crazy shit, and Roosh and Mortos and Dax, those three, total standouts in this match. They were awesome. And then uh, Roosh pinned Dax. Roosh came back out of oblivion <laughs> and got the win in this 10-man tag pinning Dax. So that was a good thing for him. And the only other thing I got to mention is arguably the most overact again in this match was the Outrunners. Yes. And uh, it was uh, Turbo Floyd got the hot tag. Mm -hmm. And he ran wild with one body slam after another. Mm -hmm. Body slam. Next bloke. Body slam. Next bloke. Body slam. And the people are going nuts for each successive body slam. And then they do the then they do the double bicep. The son of a bitch elbow. Son of a bitch elbow, and they drop it, and uh, and the place is going nuts. And I just thought again, just push them. They're over right now. I don't care what you think they'll be down the road. They're over now. And I don't know if you know this or not, but we're living right now. So push these two. If in three weeks they're no longer over, then stop pushing them. But when they're over. Push them. When they're over, you're being given something. You know what I mean? You don't have to do any work. You're allowed to be lazy. Like with Javon Evans, for example. Like, you're being given this. He's already over. Just go. No, we got to get him over. Well, you failed. Now we got these two guys over. Well, run with it. Outrun with it. Let him get over. Push him. And if something happens and all of a sudden the fans think it's stupid, then you don't got to push them anymore because it's fake. You just beat them and you're done with it. Yeah, the Outrunners last week uh, were super, super over. And this week they got their shine about four minutes into this odyssey of a tag match. And they were non-existent during the, the finish. And their team lost. Well, yes, but they did get that hot tag spot, which was the hottest part of the entire match. And a key point here, because you it mentioned it was in this, the middle, though. That's it was in the middle of a, of, of a forty-five minute match, whatever it was. <laughs> but you mentioned Brian last week. Will they get pushed outside the Ohio Valley area? Well, they were in Springfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. People love them. They're over. This act is over. This stick is over. Yes. Everyone loves it. Yes. Go to the moon with them. So the match continues. It continues. Can you imagine? It continues to continue. Can you imagine if if Bruno Sammartino came back from the grave 
And we had the opportunity to interview him on Wrestling Observer Radio. And my first thought was, I got to think of something to make this show interesting. I need to come up with some really whack. Like, it's going to be great. I'm trying to think of another example of like somebody, you know, that you could have on a show that you just already know the show is going to be good. You don't have to fucking do anything. Just like let it be good. Just same thing you got to do with the Outrunners. Just let them be over. God. Team them up with Javon. I'm win the six man titles. Fuck. Anyway, it's a good match. So the key team at the end here is a heel team. It's Beast, Mortos, and a partner. And if you're listening to the show, you think, well, it's probably Beast, Mortos, and Roderick Strong again. No! No, it's Beast, Mortos, and Roosh! Which at least makes more sense, because one dude wears a bull mask, and the other dude is El Toro Blanco. So you have two bulls here, an old bull tag team. Hey, we almost have our Beasts, Mortos. <laughs> two, we two only down, need one more. Two down, one to go. Yeah. And Roosh would make an excellent Beast. How about El Torito? Sure. That'd be a weird trio. Probably available. That'd be an awesome trio. <laughs> Beast, yes. Mortos, El Torito, and Roosh. Yes. Just put some horns on Roddy. Yeah. Or the, don't do not do that. No. That would not work. <laughs> it's worse than the mustache. So they destroy Dax and they pin him. Roosh pinned Dax Harwood to end this all-star 10-man tag. Okay. <laughs> sure. Why not? And the grizzled young vets on the ramp. Huddling on the ramp, like, God damn, we just showed up. We've already been passed on the totem pole with these fucking bulls. So we're the last, like I say, we had we had ten minutes of material to fill the last forty five minutes of the show. We're not done yet. They heard the announce. Oh, hey, Britt Baker's coming back in Pittsburgh in two weeks. <laughs> Actually, it was funny because Serena said, "I beat the hell out of Queen Aminata tonight." And let's fast forward to the five year anniversary show. I've heard rumbling. She said. That Britt Baker oh. is going to pop her head in. Shivani spoiled it before that. He did? Shivani said, mm-hmm. Shivani's the one who said Britt Baker is coming back. He did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I was like, I haven't heard any of those rumblings. The only rumblings I've heard is, where did she go? She dropped off the face of the earth. And now the story is there rumbling she was going to be back in Pittsburgh. So she challenged her and vowed to beat her ass in her own hometown. Yeah, yeah. We're still not done. No. Go back to Shivani a little bit. Oh, God, there's a lot more. So I mentioned earlier how hard, it's, how, how hard it is to keep track of all these shows. Shivani is plugging Dynamite 5, they're calling it, the fifth anniversary show. That's October 2nd. And then the week prior is Grand Slam. Yes. Shivani can't keep track of all this shit. Then it's time for a Nigel Beginner's promo. It was a great promo. His delivery was awesome. Yeah. First of all, the thing ends. We still don't know <laughs> no. if Danielson will show up. No. My other problem is he went forever. Yeah. And he's talking. And he's talking. And he's talking on the ramp. And he's talking to Shivani. Well, you know what's funny about he's this? He's talking to the camera. You know what's funny about all this talking? I think he had to talk for a long time because they had like six minutes left he had to fill. So he's talking and he's talking and he's talking and he's talking. And at some point, he's talking, and you see him kind of glance down because yeah. you can see someone's giving him the sign. But now he's got too much left to say. Uh. And so my recording cut out before the end. He went overtime after all that. He had nothing new to say. The crowd was saying, shut the fuck up. They were sick of him. And uh, the go-home show ends the announcement that Nigel McGuinness will wrestle Brian Danielson if <laughs> Brian Danielson is cleared to wrestle. Yes. What a strange period we were in here for All Elite Wrestling. Well, like I said, it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes things work, and that's that's all well and good, but you got to look at, like, the circumstances. They, they ain't selling tickets, so mm-hmm. announce the match. That's it. But they have... Actually, we got an update here. Let's see. What? What's today? The 22nd? All day. All right. Uh, as of as of the twenty second, they're at uh, fifty five hundred now. Fifty five hundred, and uh, last year it was eleven two sixty three. So they're still not even halfway mm. to what they were last year, and uh, tickets are as low as twenty five dollars, and their other three hundred level seats. 
that are available between $37 and $55. So it's not the economy. It's not the ticket prices are too expensive. At this point, over half of the human beings that went to this show in this building last year are not going this year. So that to me tells me you need to tell people the match is going to take place. Stop assuming they know. Just announce it. He may still not sell any tickets, but God damn it, he's like, I try. At least try. So anyway, we'll see how it does. But yes, it's Dynamite and Collision, Vinny. Taping both shows. I see. Yes. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.